Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. This week we're featuring the Lamborghini Islero. Now, this car is not mine. It belongs to my good friend Adam Carolla, the man with the most popular podcast in the world, race car driver, comedian, rock on tour, entrepreneur. Oh, he's just the guy's guy. But see, he doesn't drive these. So I tell him, look, you've got to take him out of the garage once in a while, bring him over here, and I'll drive him, and we'll put him on the website. Adam, come on in. Good to oh, see you, buddy. Jay, great to see you. Adam has done a terrific documentary on Paul Newman, which should be in theaters and out pretty soon, eh? Yeah, probably early in uh, 2015. Very cool. Well, it's, it's really, really good. He owns a lot of Paul Newman's race cars, and one day we'll do a whole segment on that. But right now we're talking about your Islero. How long you had this car? Uh, I've had it for a while, but it's been in the body shop and the paint shop for yeah. a long time, and it just got out of the paint shop okay. with a blue that is not quite a stock Lamborghini blue, okay. but a blue that looks really good on this car. What color was it originally when you got it? Uh, it was a silver color. Okay. And now it's this blue that's sort of, if you can think of a uh, Cobra, uh, like 289 Cobra or 427 I'm thinking Cobra. Corvette sort of blue. Uh, that's a lot of yeah. Corvette in yeah, there. Yeah, a little Corvette blue. In there, in there too, but it works nicely off the yeah. red interior. Now, the Islaro was a replacement for 400 GT, if I'm yes. like correct, right? They made 100 S's and about 125 okay. of these. And the S, you can tell if you ever see one, and you, you never see them in the wild, because right, they yeah. just made such, a, such yeah. a small amount. It's funny, you know, you think of things like Gullwing Mercedes as being so exotic, but they made 4,000 of those. No, you know? actually, they made a uh, little under 1,400 of those. Yeah, but oh, but I, I get screwed. Oh, I'm, I'm including the coupe, uh, the convertible. Oh, the convertible. Oh, well, you I'm include the convertible. Well, that's not the Gullwing. Sorry, my yeah, friend. this is all. Uh, it's all a game of statistics. Sorry, forget who I'm talking to. Yeah, I'm just yeah. talking to my wife's friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the point is this: uh, they made over a thousand right. of those cars. Right. And these, they made under 250. Right. So you just don't see them around that much. But if you, if you want to know just the fastest way to tell the S from the non-S, the S has some gill breather oh, right. pipes yeah. Yeah, cut okay. into the side. They're really not functional, right. which is a weird thing for Lamborghini in the 60s to have a sort of fake yeah. scoop in the side. And it also has an S on the back. An that's, S that's how you can tell. On the back and a little different... <laughs> Fender, yeah, yeah. Fender Arch as well. Now, Islero, if I remember correctly, I think there was a, uh, a matador named Rodriguez. He killed a bull named Islero. And Everything was named after a bull. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's all bull. It's all bull It's over all there. bull, the whole thing, they're, the whole car. They're Italians. Yeah. They love bulls, yeah, I guess. This is a much more subdued car than the 400 GT or the 350 GT. It looks almost maybe more American than some of the other cars. Not quite as wild, because when you look at the Espada, very low with four seats, the Mura, mm -hmm. the Countach, this was, I, I always try to figure out what the market was for this, just a bit more subdued, not the wild, outlandish styling that Lamborghini was famous for. Yeah, well, they started off fairly subdued with the 350s and the 400s, mm -hmm. although certainly had some more interesting compound curves and radiuses. Right. This car is a little slabbier. And this is probably ushered in the era of them getting a little more slabby and a little less right. spaceship bubbly. For my money, uh, as someone who has a, a 400 and a 350, I think this car looks better from the front because of the flip up headlights. Right. But I like the, the rear end much better on the 400s and the 350s. So this is pretty slabby and pretty pedestrian from the pillar back, right. but the front end to me, I But I from a practicality elegant. standpoint, it looks like you can see out of it better and it'd probably yeah. be a better road car to actually drive. And you have your fitted luggage back here. Has anyone ever gone anywhere with fitted luggage? That's like, first of all, the luggage is so expensive, you don't want to carry it around and dent it and chip it and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Look, I don't know. It's it's probably up there with the times guys have pulled out their decorative handkerchief and yeah. blown a snot rocket yeah, into right, it. Right. It's, just, exactly. it's there for looks. Now also, the very famous, uh, one of the prettiest wheels of all time. This wheel was used on the Miura, the Espada. Is there supposed to be a Lamborghini emblem in the center or not? I, I, I never quite, some have it, some don't. I, I, I think there should be, yeah. and, and that's what's missing. And, and also, I, I like these better in nickel. The, yeah. the knockoffs or the spinners uh, better than in chrome. Right. But um, yeah, I think that, that emblem in the middle there is a nice look, although I don't know if they left the factory that way. And by the way, truth be told, Jay, 
Uh, this car is a two plus two that should have a back seat right. that nobody could fit into. Right, right. Uh, the guy who owned the car before me had the luggage made and oh. took out the back oh, seat. Oh, I see, I see. So okay. it's, and yes. there is nothing like Italian exhaust. Nobody does exhaust like the Italians, be it Ferrari, mm -hmm. Lamborghini. That's one of the sexiest, those four pipes just look so cool. They're just the right diameter. There's four of them. Uh, it, it looks really good coming out the back of this car. And also, sort of way ahead of the time in the exhaust department, just in the last few years have realized that people like to come up behind a car right. and have it look cool. Pantera was one of the first cars where you'd walk behind it and you'd see those right, big the, pipes. Yeah, coming up, yeah. But everyone else just had their stuff kind of going down yeah, to the yeah, ground yeah, or yeah. whatever. And this stuff back in the 60s was front and center. Can we take a look at the engine? Because that's yeah. always the heart of any Lamborghini. Sure. Let's take a look at that V12. With the side drafts yes. on it. Same engine used in the Espada. This engine was used in Lamborghini from what? Basically 64 up until just a couple of years ago. Not that yeah, long ago, I the mean, basic the, block. The displacement changed. It started with a 3.5 with the 350s, and then it went to a 4 liter with the 400, and then right. it stayed with the 400, or the 4 liter, pretty much straight through, and then at some point, I guess, with the Countach. And then they put a, a four-valve head on it, and a few other things. Yeah, but it's, yeah. A, it's their small block Chevy. It's really, their, they used it in everything. Versatile. They used it in the LMO02, that big off-road uh, yeah. Jeep-type vehicle. What went here? I'm trying. I can't remember. Uh, that is a bracket, right, for the air conditioning pump. Oh, okay. okay. So what they did is because the engine existed before air conditioning <laughs> existed, and because they went with this same basic four cam, six carb, aluminum block, aluminum heads, uh, they went with this configuration for so long that when it came time to put air conditioning in their car, they said, we already have the castings for the valve covers. We'll just, we'll just weld on yeah, these yeah. nubs here. And then what would happen is, is they made a big aluminum bracket that came out, cantilevered over here, and that's where the air conditioning pump right. hung. So you'll see some of these that are set up that way and some that have that and some that don't and some of the earlier, later 60s yeah. ones, and that'll be what has air, what doesn't have air. And this was a revolutionary engine. At this point, Ferrari was still two cam, two valve, and here was, there, every Lamborghini had a four valve, twin cam engine. It was, it was pretty revolutionary. Well, you know, you know I, I, I tell people all the time, they take a car like the Ferrari Lusso, you know, three liters, and the Lamborghini came out with a 3.5, you know, two cams, four cams, right. three yeah, carbs, always... six carbs, yeah. live rear axle, independent rear axle, right. uh, four speed with a push button, overdrive, five speed transmission. Yeah, you know, yeah. Lambo had to do that, but the reason Lambo had to do that is because he was telling Ferrari to screw himself. Right, right. And if, if you're gonna tell that guy to screw himself, you better come up with a product yeah. that has one more of everything. Something I find very unusual is the steering gear. Look at that. Well, yeah. Okay. And you can see, look at how the steering comes straight down here, and the steering box is ahead of the front axle. Yeah, it's a very unusual configuration, but you know, everything is unusual with yeah. these cars. And right. I, I don't know if it was unusual for the sake of being unusual, because I have one where the parking brakes on this side of the transmission tunnel yeah. and then on the other car, it's on this <laughs> yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. And every time I say to somebody, why didn't they just pick a side? And they just went, eh, that's how they did it back then. Yeah, yeah. He's got all the sexy Fram filters. You know, a lot of people took these off back in the day because they didn't want any writing on there. But you know, when you're a star car like this, it's fun to see what the original uh, directions and uh, decals and everything said. Yeah. I. Uh, I think these cars are fantastic. I, I like them because they're so rare. Yeah. And it's funny because the, the name Lamborghini's pretty uh, well known. Uh, well known. But these people kind of go to the Countach or go to the Mura, and yeah. that's where they forget that's the, where it the, ends. The Alpa, the yeah. Flero. Right. These are Urocco. These are unusual cars for Lamborghini. So I think it's uh, about time we took this thing for a ride. Let's see how it goes. Now last time we ran out of gas. Last time we ran out of gas in his Ferrari. You remember, remember this? Here we go. We got your oil temperature. Notice oil temperature is about uh, 
50 degrees hotter than your. Uh... Oh, this thing like is starting to break down a little bit. Are we at again? <laughs> uh, is it dying? Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I filled it up. I think we are out of gas. I filled the thing up last time I, time I had it. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's what it is. I think we ran out of gas. A sticker on the thing said I filled it up. Well, here's a nice thing, Adam. Look. You're now full. <laughs> he has never lived that down. The comments section, people just railing at him. Well, let's see how it goes this time. It's a nice sound, isn't it? You know, it's a great uh, size car. You know, yeah. it's got a short nose, so you're not looking down a long hood. Yeah. I mean, it's. It almost, and I mean this in a couple of, anyway, it's like the size of an Italian Mustang would be. Yeah. You know, so if the Italians built a Mustang, it'd be a V12, and it'd be this kind of Fox body style. Right. I do like the old Lamborghinis because I do like the story. I like the Lamborghini story. And the purity. And, and, the, and, and the fact, and the purity, and the fact that it's just, they're off of everyone's radar. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not anymore so much, but, People didn't even know what those things were, you know? Yeah. yeah. But the car grows on you. It's got a very mechanical feel to it, you know? Everybody talks about the, uh, like the F1 McLaren, no power steering, no power brake. This has no power steering. This has, this has no power brake. Uh, all you're getting is road feel. You know what's great about this car? You have normal ground clearance. Yeah, you it's can not... never turn around on this road in a modern right. supercar. Right, because it's got a spoiler. You'd be ripping off the spoiler. And right. Yeah, it's low to the ground, but it doesn't have the effects. Right. And this is pretty good. It's an Adam Corolla car. It hasn't overheated. It hasn't <laughs> uh, broken down. Didn't run out of gas. The day, the day is young, Jay. I know. The it's day young. is young. You're, you're jinxing us. about uh, 65, 70, turning maybe 2,600 RPM. Not shabby. Not He's a very turbine-like. Davey D. Davis said everybody should drive a V12 Elite once in their lifetime. It's like an Italian opera, this car. <laughs> Is that what Italian opera sounds yeah, it's like? Kind of like? Yeah, it's a bad Italian opera. But you know, these engines are remarkably dependable. You know, they look complicated, but compared to a lot of modern engines, they're not. I mean, they're pretty basic. You get a manual and you can do it and tune the carburetors and play with the ignition. A lot of people upgrade it with an electronic ignition. That makes a bit of a difference. Give me a bit more spark. So Jay, this is uh, some kind of scam you got worked out here. People bring their expensive cars over to your garage, you drive the wheels off them yeah, for an hour, out of people's cars. and then right. you give it back to them. That's right, there you go. Hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, we'll let you know when it's on. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, once again, like Tom Sawyer getting his friends to paint the fence, I've duped Adam into thinking we taped this for the show so I could drive the heck out of his car. So uh, this is fantastic. We didn't run out of gas. We didn't break down. I know, it's, it's a first for us. Corolla, ladies and gentlemen. I'm on a roll, baby. Look yeah. out, 2015. This proves that a Lamborghini can be a, a dependable car. We've got a little plugged uh, jet, I think, in one of the carburetors, maybe two of them. But other than that, it's a fantastic ride. Adam, thank you very much. Jay, always a pleasure, my Lamborghini friend. Lamborghini Islero. Check it out. Oh, and check out his podcast. AdamCorolla.com. AdamCorolla.com. Thanks, you guys. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>